listener note. This episode contains adult content and language. This may not be suitable for all listeners. First up, a content warning. This video will include discussions of racist language and historical events of violence against people of color. Oh, in linguistics, nothing has meaning except the meaning you assign it. So the origin of the word Kaling comes from the area of India called Kalinga because the early Indians who came, not the ones the British brought but much earlier, were from Kalinga. So as a contraction of Kalinga, they were called Kaling. Now this was used by the Indians themselves, so it was not offensive. But later on, uh, through usage, it was used to describe as Autakling, Kling Mabo, and these negative connotations uh, sort of degraded the meaning of Kling into something quite offensive to the Indians. Um, however, you know, the Penang people, as you mentioned, um, do not regard it as offensive, and they use the word Hindu uh, as, as a more offensive term. So, as, as you can see, different people can assign different meanings to the same word, and it will take on um, different degrees of offensiveness. Now, take, for example, the word Negro, um, which was used by the American whites uh, and, and changed actually over time to nigger as a short form to Negro. So nigger became offensive and by extension so did Negro. But the word Negro just means black in Spanish. So how can a color be offensive? So, like I said, nothing has meaning except the meaning you assign it. So if people assign a derogatory meaning to a particular word, then it becomes derogatory. If people assign uh, offensive uh, meaning to a word, then it becomes offensive. So different words can mean different things to different people. So that's where we need to be um, cognizant of the ins of the sensitivity of different peoples. You know, they could have a agree on all the things you say but uh, there's a part that I need to tambah eh, kena modify sikit apa what you say uh, it doesn't just mean what meaning you assign it to by the person saying it it also has meaning to the person receiving it so now if the person receiving it and a handful person of the same race or community uh, receives it in a particular mind manner they assign the meaning to a particular manner then that meaning is also relevant you understand that? Huh? so jadi if I say a word to you as a compliment I intend it to be a compliment but to you, that word comes to you as an uh, insult, and you grew up no, it being, uh, you know, knowing it to be an insult, and you have used that word as an insult to other people, or people have used it as an insult to you. So therefore, to you, the meaning of the word is insulting. To me, it's a compliment. Now, I can say that with the intention to delight you, to compliment you, but if you receive that as an insult, so therefore, my intention to give you delight end up being received by you as something hurtful. Faham tak? The point there. So therefore, if that mismatch exists, unless you can resolve the meaning uh, and get agree to the definition or the significance or the essence of that word, if you can, then just stay away from that word. Habis kita. This is how it is supposed to be. Faham tak? Eh? Jadi, sama lah. Whatever I want to give you or you want to give me, you may say it's good. But if I don't like it, don't give me. Tak payahlah. Eh? I, I, I may not like it. I may, I don't need it pun. Nampak tak? Eh? Sama macam you so don't need it. So, kalau kita nak kata apa pun, tu salah. Eh? So, mungkin I have a very nice nickname for you. Tapi, uh, 
that nickname is uh, offensive to you memalukan you you tak suka uh, you malu orang dengar nama tu pun I tak, su tak suka so I jangan panggil lah I should panggil you based on nama yang you suka dipanggil nampak so kalau this particular Indian uh, and banyak lagi macam Indian dia mereka kata mereka tak suka uh, perkataan keling tu because it's insulting then uh, tak apalah kita tahu kita janganlah pakai perkataan keling tapi what I ask for in my voice note explain lah apa masuk keling tu pada mereka because I just explain orang utara kita orang utara kita panggil keling tu apa maksud dia faham tak eh kita refer to a particular kaum and tak ada langsung uh, intention of degradation or insulting or apa ni tak ada no such things uh, keling is just like another keling keling is, is for orang from India and China from China macam tu eh? so so dia punya dia punya um, neutrality sama macam kita panggil Cina and apa ni Punjabi pun eh, kat Penang mereka panggil Bengali tapi I've been corrected lah by some of our apa ni Punjabi punya uh, brethren dia tak betul eh. siapa Bengali you refer to what mereka upset pasal benda tu so I tak tahu because to me I grew up yang pakai dud tu yang putih-putih sikit punya Indian tu macam Indian tapi mereka 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 makan capati mereka masak mereka serve capati yang kita Ha, semua tu we grew up and that's how my parents teach me and we all know and uh, family kita semua my relatives my cousins semua kita panggil yang tu Bengali so cuma when we say Bengali kita semua understand that's it that's that tapi cuma ramai pula Punjabi kat sini don't like to be referred to that because mereka kata that's not them mereka <laughs> kata mereka Punjabi ok so bila I tahu tu I tak mau panggil lah Bengali tu Because they don't like it So To my friends eh, People-people yang tegur aku semua ni I change lah I pakai lah Punjabi If that pleases them I want to always do things That pleases other people I don't want to do things That makes people angry Faham tak? Sama macam I so don't want to be Be angry But people saying things That I don't like to hear uh, Jadi uh, I, I hope you understand Where I'm coming from Uh, it's got the, the meaning that the person saying it assign it signs the, uh, 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 you know mean the word to be is relevant but the person who receives it the meaning to that person is equally relevant uh, but what's important is that when uh, somebody says something without any intention to insult but the other person get insulted make it known why you're insulted and jangan marah jangan judge orang yang Uh, kata perkataan tu kat you Faham tak? Pasal dia bukan niat nak insult you uh, Tapi what I don't like about the video of budak ni uh, Dia masuk tu dia macam unbecoming Tak tahu ni why you do this Kenapa ni Dia masuk tu dia nak tarbiah Dia nak ajak PM pula Ken Kat you That he should not do this You did a blunder You patut dia Eh I think he better know his place lah Faham tak? Kan? You memang lah rakyat you boleh bercakap Tapi You nak sah orang tak kena tempat At no point Did PM Intend to insult the Indians Why would he want to insult Indians Untuk apa What does he get out of it Faham tak Kalau dia nak insult Indian, Dia boleh kata benda lagi teruk lah So that's not the intention Tapi He use a word That some Indians finds offensive Kena explain Okay And the Indian speaking ministers tu Uh, kalau boleh pergilah kat uh, PM uh, Saravanan dah buat dah, dah, pergi cakap kat PM tu kenapa perkataan keling tu because Anwar will should explain what keling means to the, to, to to orang Penang Penang nice uh, dia akan explain kenapa, apa maksud dia is a uh, clear cut uh, tapi um, uh, Saravanan ke siapa ke maybe dia boleh explain lah kenapa should not kan Uh, this is the way forward
One of the failures of our education system, and uh, this is something uh, YB Fadlina, the Minister of Education, is um, apparently incapable of comprehending, is the fact that um, there's too much emphasis on Basa Melayu and Islam. Uh, there's almost nothing about other cultures of importance. For example, one of the most important texts in the Tamil language is the earliest text called the Tirukural, which most non-Tamils will probably in Malaysia will probably have never even heard of. Now, this text is incorrectly translated into English as sacred verses. I say incorrect because it is nothing sacred, nothing holy. It's a book about ethics and how to conduct yourself in life. So it's a book of ethics uh, rather than a religious text. Now, this text was first put uh, onto paper thousands of years ago, much later than when it was first um, conceived. It was handed down in oral form for hundreds or perhaps even thousand years uh, before it was committed to paper. Now, this text is very interesting. It consists of um, couplets. Couplets are Pantundua Karat, and it consists of 1,330 couplets, and each uh, line has seven syllables. And can you imagine such a long, epic work in verse consisting of 1,330 couplets and each line having seven syllables and that um, those constraints are to be used and it rhymes, you know, and it's to be used to describe ethics. I'm particularly interested in chapter 26 of the Tirukural and the chapters entitled The Renunciation of Animal Flesh. Uh, basically, it's about vegetarianism. And it goes on to talk about the virtues of vegetarian, the vegetarianism, about how it affects your mood, your temper, temperament, and other things, which almost 3,000 years later, uh, science is proving to be, is proven what it says in the Turukural to be true. So it's very interesting. And it's just very sad that non-Tamils um, do not know of its existence, of its significance, and how important it is to Tamil culture. I've been told quite reliably that every Tamil family would have a copy of the Tirukkural in the house. And um, although many people nowadays, which is also a sad thing, many Tamil people nowadays are unable to read Tamil. Um, it is still held in high regard. Now, talking about Tamil schools, when I was a reporter, I was this was, what, 30 years ago, and I don't think the situation has changed much. Um, there was a lack of headmasters in Tamil schools, primary schools or secondary schools, because there was a lack of qualified people to hold a post. And I've met Tamil people who've studied in schools, secondary schools until Form 5, and they told me that when I asked them about, about the teaching of Tamil language in school, um, did you learn up to Form 5 level uh, Tamil language? They said, no, although I finished Form 5, the teacher who taught Tamil was only qualified to teach up to Form 3. So Form 4, Form 5, we just repeated uh, what we learned in Form 3. Now this is sad, deplorable, and, and really, well, it's outrageous. Um, I mean, in an ideal world, uh, Tamil, Chinese uh, should be taught in all schools, and Arabic too. Contemporary Arabic, by the way, not Quranic Arabic, or contemporary Arabic in addition to Quranic Arabic. Now, the difference between Quranic Arabic and contemporary Arabic is the difference between English as spoken by me now 
and Shakespearean English or English written by Chaucer. So it's very different. I remember my mom telling me when she went to Mecca and uh, she bought oranges in the bazaar and she spoke in Arabic, the Arabic that she learned at IIU, International Islamic University, night classes because she wanted to uh, recite the Quran properly and understand its meaning as she recites the, the words. Um, and she was laughed at by the, by the vendor, the orange vendor. And she was offended. She said, no, I'm trying my best to speak in Arabic. Why are you laughing at me in, in, um, in contempt, you know, like you know, mocking me? And she said, well, what you just said was the equivalent of verily, pray thee, how much are thy oranges? So you can see the difference between contemporary Arabic and uh, Quranic Arabic. But I digress. The general point I'm going to, I want to make is that Malaysians are very insular, uh, blinkered, and the focus is way too much on Islam and Bahasa Melayu. Well, they now rebranded as Bahasa Malaysia. Uh, and not enough, certainly not enough, is given to non Chinese uh, to learn Chinese or um, Tamil. I mean, it's just a waste, okay? It's just a waste. Um, and I think our education system has been hijacked by certain self-serving politicians. And, um, well, I'll tell you bluntly, la, there's been the practice of agnotology. Agnotology is a science and art of keeping people ignorant. It's a power structure tool, basically by withholding knowledge, by keeping people ignorant, you can exploit and subjugate them. And this is nothing new. This is, has been used by uh, people in authority for thousands of years. Uh, we should make a conscious effort to make knowledge more accessible. And I've spoken about knowledge, I made videos about this previously, not just about epistemology and the theory of knowledge, but some simple things like knowledge is to know that you know what you know and do not know what you do not know. Knowledge is of two kinds. Either we know a subject ourselves or, where, or we know where to find information upon it. I could go on, but that will be rambling. So I just want to finish here and just make the general point that please let us be more democratic about knowledge, make it more accessible, and let us learn more about the various ethnicities of our, of our nation. Uh, many people in, in uh, Semenanjung doesn't know what um, Tagadao Do Kaamatan means, you know, or even any of the Lib Iban languages, or Murut, or Kenya, or Kayan, or Bawang, or whatever. You know, we are so ignorant of the other ethnicities in our country, it's shameful. So, if you have any interesting ideas that can help build a better Malaysia, uh, please uh, put them in the comment section. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe. Uh, the subscription is free, you don't have to pay money. And we don't, you know, uh, YouTube doesn't give us your information. So there's no list of uh, subscribers. I just know the number of subscribers, but no information about who the subscribers are. And um, we are not monetized, so there's no advertisements. When you click on our videos, you straight away uh, watch our videos. You don't have to see annoying ads. Anyway, now please subscribe if you haven't done so, and please share our videos uh, far and wide. Terima kasih. Wassalam.
in this video resonated with you, be sure to like it, share it with your friends, leave a comment. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.